There is nothing wrong with your internet. Do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the USA and Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Steve. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And tonight we'll be discussing episode 10 of season 1 of The Purge. It's no longer an event series. No, it isn't. Because just before the episode aired, the USA channel announced there's still a lot of purging and purifying to be done. (laughs) I wonder where we're going. Yeah. Because USA announced today, conveniently the same day as the midterm elections, that James DeMonico's The Purge TV show will return for a second season. It's the network's top-rated drama, and based on the continued success of the franchise across both film and television, audiences aren't even close to tired of watching a parallel universe America in which people save up all their hate for one night each year where they can legally lash out in any way they choose. Just some good old comfort TV. (laughs) (laughs) It's crazy because, like, it didn't go the way I thought it was going at all. Right. So Jane really is dead. Yeah. Was not expecting that at all. Nope. There was just all sorts of insanity this episode. I happened to watch this episode after competing for badges for San Diego Comic-Con's 50th anniversary today. And I'll tell you... I want to go purge. Okay. (laughs) It was rough. But just watching this after that, because everybody's so frustrated and you see all this stuff online and then you watch this and you're like, oh my God. Okay. I almost can see, and we joke about retail purge all the time. (laughs) I could almost see something like this happen and people acting exactly like this, especially like Joe. Yes. Because I'm like, okay, I can see it, but. I mean, then there's like the reality because there's lines, you know, that just makes everybody a murderer. It's like, oh, well, you know what? Yeah. So obviously you don't want this to happen, but you can kind of see it almost happening. Yep. And then I think what's coming. We have Black Friday coming and you think the purge was on the way people act. (laughs) Exactly. I'm just throwing all that out there. Something to think about. Little food for thought. But now let's rewind and talk about the ratings. All right, episode 10 brought in a 0.36 in adults 18 to 49 with 0.986 million viewers, making it the 30th overall cable show for the day, but that was also election night, so... I'm actually surprised it was on, because so many shows weren't on because of the election. yes. So, I still think it did pretty good holding up against the election. Maybe a lot of people were thinking... Yeah. With what's happening in the elections, this could happen. Maybe I need to watch. (laughs) Yeah, this country seems to be heading in that direction quicker than we may anticipate. Oh, well, let's jump into the finale of this season, shall we? All right. A Nation Reborn. Penelope takes charge. Miguel and Pete grapple with an unexpected enemy. I don't know. I think we kind of expected this to happen. Oh, yes. Rex wasn't going to give up. Yeah, I'm like, uh, it was too easy for him to just be gone, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, we'll open with Miguel and Pete, and they made it out of the uh, Chevelle in time before the RPG blows up. and They blew up a really nice car that made me sad. Very. And, of course, Rex tells one of his guys to drag the bodies out. There ain't no bodies in there, Rex. Oh, yeah, so they can't be far. No, so he tells him to split up and find him. He wants his money back. The bounty will cover his losses. And I thought it was interesting because he's like, not just Miguel, Pete. And one of the guys like, wait, Pete the cop? Yeah. Rex was kind of pissed. He's like, he's not above this. Like, oh. Yeah, he's not immune. 
Right. I thought his guys were going to be like, dude, no. Yeah. So, of course, we see Pete and Miguel hiding behind a very small picket fence <laughs> with a lot of... <laughs> so suburban. Yeah. And Pete thinks that it would be best and something they won't expect if we take the fight to them instead of waiting for them to come to us. Yeah, I mean, they think they're running, so that makes sense to me. Oh, absolutely. You can reduce the numbers real quickly. and. Sure enough, we see uh, Miguel take one of the guys out, and then Pete. Oh, with a barbecue fork. (laughs) (laughs) And then Pete, it was, that was some barbed wire that he had taken off. I'm like, how did you not cut the hell out of your hands? Yeah. But just seeing that, it's like, oh, man, that's up close and personal. Uh, Yeah. Wow. So at least that reduces the numbers almost in half. So they went from five to three. So Wait, was it? Three that I took it down to, or because yeah. there seemed to be more when later. Well, there was... I'm not counting Rex. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, okay, never mind. I think it was Rex and three others that okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> eventually, get hot on their trail because they find the wiring that Pete used to kill his guy, and they just happen to pick the right direction. Right. See, that one kind of got me. I'm like, really? <laughs> so, of course. Miguel and Pete get there first, and yeah, it's booby trap just like Joe's house was. Yeah, a little bit even more over the top. Yeah, and of course Rex and his men show up and start shooting, so they have to run and take cover. And Pete decides, I've got another idea. And he asks Miguel if he can take out one of those explosives. Okay, and they get him, get him into an alley. It looked like they're by the school and Pete comes out with his hands up and you get a quick shot of a tripwire. You go, oh, oh, yeah, you could barely see it. So I yeah. can totally understand Rex not seeing it. Right. But you would think he'd be like, hold on, what's going on? But I guess because he doesn't know anything about what's going on at the school. No. He wouldn't have even thought about it. No. To him, it's just the school that's been closed down. Right. And of course... Rex and Pete go back and forth, and Rex is, wants Miguel. It's ain't enough just to take him down. He gets a little bit closer and just almost to the tripwire. You go, oh, man, come on. I, I know. I'm like, come on, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Right. And Pete walks up a little bit closer, which causes Rex to do the same thing, and kaboom. Fortunately, Pete. Dives out of the way just in the nick of time. That made an awfully big hole. Yes, it did. And so Pete and Miguel get up and check on them. And it looks like they're all dead. So they head back to the school. But we see one of them still moving. I thought it was Rex. Right. Yeah, I kind of thought so too. But later on, we find out that's not the case. Yeah. Although at that point, if it's not Rex, I don't know why they're not like, Forget this crap. Right. Yeah. (laughs) So we go inside where there's only one hour left for the annual purge, but there's still a lot of loose ends and unfinished business. Joe's got Rick and Jenna coming out to be on the stand. And in a flashback, we see Joe and Rick were once partners, shall we say, as Rick has hired Joe to install security on his new buildings. Yeah, and... We get kind of that back and forth about how this is the biggest job Joe has ever had. Right. And it's like, uh uh-oh. I just felt things were going to go bad. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And that's Joe's problem is that he feels that Rick reneged on the deal and refused to pay him. And later we find out that, yeah, Rick found a loophole in the contract. And refused to pay him. Well, see, I was a little confused because Joe kept saying there were so many words in there. I didn't understand it. So hold on. If you have something major like this, a ton of money going in, why wouldn't you have a lawyer look over things? Exactly. And did Rick actually find a loophole or is he saying it to find a way to save Jenna? That's a pretty good question. That's what I was actually thinking happened. Right. And it could be. He may have. 
because he does later admit that, yeah, we had a deal go bad and we couldn't afford to lose any more money. Yeah. That's why I was thinking, you know what? If you messed up, it's not anyone's fault but your own. Right. So, of course, Jenna's disappointed but understands why Rick did what he did. And instead of killing Rick himself, Joe hands Jenna the gun and says that he will spare her life and the babies if she kills her husband. That was kind of messed up. That I thought really she was going to turn it and try to shoot Joe. Right. But then with what happened, I'm kind of glad she did it. <laughs> yeah, because Rick just begs her to pull the trigger, and she finally does, but it's empty. All you hear is a click. Right. Yeah, did you really think I was going to give you a loaded gun? Right. Now, while wow. all this is going on, Penelope finds the one bolt that Joe didn't get completely locked down on the cage. Because we do get, had a brief shot of him going through the school, setting up all the booby traps and, and the cage, and there happened to be a noise, and he got up to check it out and apparently forgot all about that one bolt not being completely bolted down. Right. Now, of course, Penelope manages to start working it out. And the other girl goes, what's going on here? Be quiet. We're go right. <laughs> going to get us out of here. Yeah. That lady all of a sudden is like, yeah, I'll help whatever you need. So she gets it out, is able to get out of the ropes around her wrists, and basically yells at Joe that she has the right to purge and she's taken out this other girl. That was a really good switcheroo. Oh, no joke. That was amazing to see that she came up with that plan. And he was just so focused on the other two. Right. And as soon as he saw that, he goes running into the cage, which allows Jenna time to untie Rick. And Penelope goes on the offensive with the big bolt and oh my God. runs it right through Joe's eye. I'm like, a little bit further, it probably would have hit his brain. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, they, they struggle, they, the fight happens, they push him in, and everybody runs out of the room. But why didn't anybody try closing the cage? At least give him a few more seconds, you yes. know. To... Yeah, I would have immediately tried to lock his ass in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that crazy man chasing after me, especially seeing that he knows where all the booby traps, and I don't. Right. Yeah, anything that would have given him a little bit more time to get away, but, oh, man. But still, right. off they go. Yeah, because you got Rick and Jenna going in one direction and Penelope and the other girl going in another direction. And you see Penelope and the girl running down a hall, and the other girl goes, oh, this way. Yeah, and right there you're like, uh, we don't even know this girl's name. She's not making it. Nope, and she didn't. She hit the door and it blew up. But we see Miguel and Pete coming into the building. And sure enough, they run into Rick and Jenna. Rick was at least smart enough to grab one of the guns. Yes. And of course, we have a little bit of a standoff here until they realize that, yes, they're not going to kill each other. <laughs> I really thought there was going to be some issues, but thankfully, no. Yeah. But just as they're about to figure out what's going on, one of Rick's crew comes in firing his weapon. Yeah, maybe you guys shouldn't have been talking so loud. Yeah. Yeah, and I love it because that's right when, I can't remember if it was Miguel or Pete, like, come with us, we'll keep you safe. safe right. Gunshots! Well, there was the kiss of death, wasn't it? Yes. Of course, <laughs> they filled the guy full of bullets, but not before he's able to put a couple into Rick and one into Pete's leg. Yeah, I'm like, oh, crap. Because Rick got it right in the gut. I'm like, this isn't good. Right shoulder, yeah. And Pete tells Miguel to go find his sister as he will stay with Jenna and Rick. And poor Rick didn't make it out alive. No. I was really unhappy. Yeah, I mean, those two had some really intense scenes in this episode. Right. I thought they did an absolutely great job with really pulling off the intensity levels in in the scene where they were on trial and in this scene. Yeah, and 
And I'm thinking, okay, they made it through so much crap. Yeah. Like, okay, no, it'll be fine. They got this. And they'll make it through, blah, blah, blah. It's like, ugh, really? Yeah. So with just minutes left in Purge Night, Penelope tries to escape through the pool room, but is caught by Joe. I thought she was going to, she's small. I thought she was going to be able to squeeze through there. Yeah, I did too. I thought she she was so close to being out of there. Of course, Joe begins to recite how it's his right to purge and how it'll cleanse his soul. And Penelope rebukes his claim of righteousness and states that purging will not fix anything and she is not afraid to die. Yeah, she was repeating everything he said just word for word. And he's like, what? What? Yeah. (laughs) She's like, yeah, we had to listen to this drivel too. Yeah, that's how Varys taught us what the mindset is like. And you go, oh, where's all this intelligence coming from, Penelope? (laughs) Well, (laughs) she realized (laughs) that she was, things were so screwed up and she didn't, she didn't know, but now she realizes. Yeah, boy, the light bulb. Turned on quick, right? It exploded. (laughs) So just as Joe attempts to pull the trigger, Miguel enters the room and fires a shot at Joe. Now, of course, they've all got these bulletproof vests on, so it's going to take a whole lot more than one shot to get rid of anybody, (laughs) except maybe (laughs) Penelope. And they're fighting, and he's about to kill Joe, and Penelope hits him with a broom or some kind of long thing, and Joe picks her up and throws her into the wall, and then the alarm goes off, signaling the end of purge night. And, oh my God, Joe's attitude. Yeah. Like a freaking switch. He went back to being calm, cool, and law-abiding Joe. Right. He's like, oh, okay, well, guess I'll have to get you next year. What? Yeah. (laughs) And Miguel just looks at him like, are you insane? Yeah, we're not going through this. Yeah, what did he say? Oh, yeah, it'll start and end with you guys next year. I was sitting there, and I'm sorry, because I just had the same face just now. Like, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> and Miguel had the same face because, you know, he's like, oh, I don't think so. He's going to put a couple in you right now. Yeah. One in the head and then kicks him over into the pool. <laughs> yeah. And I love it because Joe's like, but, but this is murder. What do you think you did yeah. today? Right. This guy obviously is just crackpot at that yep. point. Absolutely. He is. But, like, at the same time, you have Jenna and Pete had made it outside, and they're sitting on the bench like, oh, we made it. (laughs) You know, the siren's going off, and they're just like, okay, I can breathe. And then finally, Miguel and Penelope make it out there. And this kind of surprised me, because Pete just looks at him, and Miguel's like, yeah, it's done. He's like, oh, I kind of thought so. I heard the shots before the alarms went off. Right. If you know what I mean. Okay, you didn't even have to add that. No. (laughs) I feel like everybody knew what you meant and everybody was cool with it. Right. Yeah. There was no need for that. (laughs) Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So they walk off and we flash forward to one year later on Purge Night. And we see Jenna is not in the country. She's in Paris with her baby. I thought she was on a ship at first. Right. As she watches the news report that Purge Night could come to Europe eventually. That's a scary thought. Right. And then we see Miguel and Penelope visiting Pete's bar. Penelope wants a drink. Yeah, you're too young. Oh, so I can murder somebody, but I'm too young to have a drink. Pete, you know what? Good yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. So they have a drink, and next we see. Miguel getting a weapon, telling Penelope he hopes he doesn't have to use it. They shake Pete's hand and head off into the night, except they're in an ambulance. I was really surprised about that. Yeah. Well, I didn't really think that they would go out and purge, but I was having a hard time figuring out, okay, what are the, how are they going to save people if right. you've only got one gun? <laughs> and Miguel saying, I hope I don't have to use it. It's like, okay. I thought it was more like they were going to try to somehow talk people into 
going back to Pete's bar or something. Right. But the fact that they're going out as like medics, it's like, okay. Yep. Well, it'll be helpful. Good. Yes. So that's how we wrap up the first season of The Purge. And wow, what a great 10 episodes this has been. It was really good. I loved the way they played it out and how the stories all converged. Yeah. And I I doubt very seriously we'll see any of these characters in season two. Probably not. Maybe and, Pete, if they're still... Well, it depends on when they do it. If right. they're going to go forward, back. Right. I guess we'll find yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I thought it was good. I hope you guys all liked it. But why don't you shoot us an email? Let us know what you thought overall. Sci-fi talk at fangirlzone.com. That's S-Y-F-Y. And, you know, let us know if you thought it was good, bad, what they can, what you think they can do for the next season, forward, back, whole other people. Who knows? Oh, yeah. It was just good. I really liked the way it all went around. So while you're at it, if you can rate and review us on iTunes and any other platform you find us on, because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us. Tell your friends, they can now binge watch these 10 episodes and tell you what they think about it. Uh, we, of course, hope you're enjoying the podcast and really ask that you check out our website too, www.fangirlzone.com. You can find all sorts of randomness over there. We're going to be fixing up all of our con travels so you can see all the pictures. Otherwise, at least I have them all over at Facebook in the various conventions, folders, I'm still having a problem with this website. (laughs) (laughs) I can't figure it out. I'm not tech savvy. But for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk, I am Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve. What you didn't accomplish tonight, there's always next year. And until next time.